Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and these are eight of the MRG synthesizer modules. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this. Cheers. So, as you can see, Gianluca over at MRG Synthesizers sent me over eight of his modules, and it's been an absolute pleasure playing with them for the uh, last couple of weeks, and I've truly gotten to know uh, each one of these modules pretty uh, fairly. This is, of course, the first time that I'm actually going to be reviewing eight modules at the same time, so uh, bear with me. I will uh, cheat on occasion while I'll have some uh, of the documentation available there as well. Uh, but um, as I said, you're in for a treat. This is going to be great. So uh, that being said, I would say uh, here we go. Here we've got the eight MRG uh, modules that we've got here in front of us. So we've got the VCO, the Fold, the LPF, the LPF slash A, the ADSR, the VCA, the Kick, and the Attenuator. So before we dive into each one of these at a time, uh, let's just uh, call out the, um, yeah, you might call it the ugly duckling, but I truly love it. It's the LPF slash A. So um, MRG just does offer this in two color schemes, either the well, the, 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 the white on black as the rest of the modules, uh, but also in acid yellow. And why I emphasize acid yellow there, that's gonna become fairly clear later on. Uh, but other than that, overall, the, well, the aesthetics of these modules is just great. And on the one hand, they do remind me of the, um, of the two HP set. Uh, because those operate at the same level where they make sure that everything looks the same, behaves the same, has the same uh, labeling across the board. Uh, of course, the MRG ones are not 2 HP wide, they are 4 HP wide, so they do offer a bit more, um, well, let's just say a bit more handling here and there. Uh, but I love the aesthetics here, and of course, uh, when Gianluca offered me, well, do you want to have the LPF slash A in yellow or black? I immediately said, I want to have it in yellow because I'm, every chance I get to add a bit more color to my rack, I'm just gonna jump at that. So without further ado, let's just um, quickly jump in and just uh, have a look at these modules. So let's have a look at the VCO. So. Again, I'm just going to make sure that I've got some uh, some so, some additional information here, so you might find me just uh, looking up the documentation because this is the first time that I'm actually reviewing eight modules at the same time. And um, like everyone, I'm just human, so I need to have some uh, some cheat sheets ready to go. Um, so the VCO does have two outputs: a saw output and a square output. So let's just give both of them a quick listen. There you go. And as you can see, the um, the square wave is extremely tight. Um, so it's got a nice, well, shape to it. And well, that's something that we can truly work with. If we then switch that over to the saw wave. Again, something that we can um, appreciate. So. Uh, while we have that, let's um, disconnect this for now and look at the other, well, the inputs. Uh, so we've got CV, which is essentially the uh, one volt per octave. We've got a mod input, which is the input for frequency modulation. We've got a sync input, which is always nice to have. And we've got PWM, so pulse width modulation. Then here we've got the M knob, which is the attenuator for the FM, for the frequency modulation. We've got a C, which is a coarse modulation for the actual frequency. And we've got an F, which is the fine modulation. I'm not quite sure if you can see this on the video. So you've got M, C, F, that's it. Um, let's just uh, play around with those. I'm just gonna connect the So that's the fine, and here we've got coarse. Let's connect another oscillator to this. So I'm just gonna grab the Orna. So this is just 
nice to do any sort of frequency modulation you might want. I'm just gonna turn this down a bit. I love it. <laughs> so that's just fine. Um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put these a bit higher and I'm just gonna get an LFO in into the PWM. So this is of course a very compact uh, PWM, but if I then connect this to um, channel number two of maths, I can actually go over the actual, well, pulse width modulation and make sure that the pulse is zero wide. So that's something you need to keep in mind. So if you've got an LFO that's running into this, make sure you use an attenuator to make sure that's not happening. So let's go back to the PWM here. And then of course, if you do the sync, Of course, really, this is really useful if you do two um, uh, oscillators at the same time, and if you do want to do frequency modulation, you already you can't see it at right now, but you do hear that that reset happening. Let me just go to a lower frequency, even a higher frequency. You do hear that that sync happening. So that's in short the um, the VCO. Uh, let's have a look at the next one, which is the fold. So when we talk about folding, um, that typically what you want to see is you typically want to work with a sine wave because that's typically something that you that you expect. So I'm just gonna use, instead of the VCO, I'm just gonna use one from the Orna and I'm just gonna connect this. And if we then start folding this, there you go. This is pretty default folding behavior, but it's, it's, it's just great, right? And so you've got your folds, you've got your symmetry, you've got your modulation, and you then also have the saturation there as well. And that's of course something that we, that we can play with. If you want to saturate this even further and really overdrive this, you already see that, but especially if we then go back to the so right now we don't have any folding, but you do see that we overdrive the actual signal and actually, well, I'm, you might actually call this distortion already as well. So if you then do distortion plus folding, you truly get beautiful, uh, beautiful well, uh, wave shapes there. So that's just great. And then of course, if you can play around with the symmetry, let me just, um, get something going here. Let me just turn down the, uh, the overdrive. So if we then say, well, we have the symmetry here. So typically you would say, well, the symmetry should be at the middle. Or you can just do it all the way to the left or all the way to the right. But if you then get some folding going and you then start to play with the symmetry, This is of course a sound designer's dream where you can truly tweak that sound shape exactly like you want. So this is of course based on a, on a wave, uh, on, on a uh, simple sine wave. Uh, let's grab a triangle wave. It's almost exactly the same. But if we then grab something like a pulse wave, you do see that the actual folding doesn't really have the same effect on a, uh, on a pulse um, wave as it has on a sine or a triangle wave. Let's grab a, a ramp wave. So that's always something to keep in mind. And then of course you do have an input there for the um, for the symmetry. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the sawtooth out, grab something there and then just grab the LFO from the 
and just make sure that we patch that into the symmetry CV. And if we then So this is of course very nice if you want to start playing around and, and create drones of sorts. And you might want to do take this a bit lower. And one thing, of course, you do get is an extra out, which is just going to output the, um, well, the input that you've got. And that's, of course, really nice to have. So that's the, um, the fold one. Let's grab the first filter, which is the LPF. And I'm just going to grab the first output there. So then we've got the cutoff, the, well, the P, which is essentially yeah, how do we call the P? It's 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 peak bass, but essentially it's the same as resonance. And then you've got your um, cutoff modulation and you've got your peak modulation there too with the accompanying inputs. So again, let's uh, just play around with this. So I'm just patching in the saw from the VCO. And if we turn the filter all the way open, you'll immediately see that we do have the, well, the saw shape there. And if we then turn the cutoff frequency down, you do see that we do start to eat away at the higher frequencies and the actual wave shape starts to, well, turn into more of a sine wave because of course at the end, we are only going to, just gonna get the, the base frequency, which is in this case an F5. There you go. So this is very responsive and if we then turn up resonance or peak in this case halfway and we just turn it down you do seem to get that nice tangy sound to it which is of course something that you're looking for in a in a filter and if we then turn the resonance all the way up you do seem to hear the filters starting to self oscillate so if i disconnect this we are gonna hear that self oscillation happening. So this is of course something that you can work with. So if you then grab, let's say uh, something like a, like a sequence. So I've got a sequence loaded here on the Hermits uh, just outside of your, uh, outside of your screen. And if I grab that, you might want to say, okay, well, the cutoff uh, CV, let's just see if we can use that to play something. So I'm just gonna play something. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is that this doesn't include a one volt per octave input. So you do need to well, figure out exactly where that one volt per octave setting is. And I'm of course not the best to uh, to tailor and, and really listen to this and say where the full proctive is. But in theory, you can do that, which is of course great. And this is of course something where you can then start playing around with the modulation also for the uh, for the peak, where you might say, okay, well, we've got the, uh, the sequence going. And then we say we grab another cable and we grab the, the sign outputs and we just grab that and say, well, you're gonna do the peak modulation. You might want to. This is of course something that you can easily start playing around with. From a sound design perspective, this is of course great. So that's the first
first of the, the filters, let's have a look at the LPF slash A. So I'm just gonna disconnect this one here, make sure that we have that one, and grab the output from this one, and there you go. Open this up all the way. So this is a bit of a different beast altogether. So this has a gain, a cutoff frequency knob, a resonance knob. So in this case, it is called resonance, but it's it's essentially the same as we've got on the LPF, but there it's called peak. And then we've got an envelope. So we here we do have an envelope in that you can use to well, to modulate the actual color frequency, and it does have a volt per octave input there. So the first thing that I then want to figure out is, does it self oscillate? So if I turn this all the way up, as you can hear, we don't get any, um, any self resonance straight away. But what we can then do is, of course, instead of just patching in a, um, a signal, we can just patch in something uh, like a like a trigger So right now we're just pinging this filter of course and if we then If we then grab the the sequence that we were working with I'm hoping you guys can hear this. So we're actually just pinging this filter. And that's of course something that you can only do if you have something that's almost resonating. So if we change this around to the um, to previous one and say, well, we just grabbed the cut of there. So you just want to get the resonance just below self resonation, self resonance, I should say. But still, it works that much better here on the LPF slash A. But that's something that you can truly work with, right? So let's just uh, patch this back to where we were. So I'm just gonna get the, um, leave this one in there, the output, and make sure that we get the sequence going on the VCO. And then, of course, we are gonna continue on to the next one, which is the ADSR. So I'm just gonna say, well, I'm just gonna use this as a gate input and what I'm then going to do is I'm just going to grab the envelope out and I'm going to patch that into the envelope in here. So what we're now going to see is once we have that one connected as well. So hold on for a second there. So there we go. So now we have something that is like that. And if we then turn this down, we now see that the envelope that we have designed from this ADSR, that this is now um, modulating the cutoff frequency. And we can truly play with this. So I can actually say, well, I want to have the sustain a bit higher, or I want to have the release a bit higher. Attack, decay. So what I can then do is I can actually just patch this into my uh, Expert Sleepers ES9, and we can actually see what's happening there. So let me just uh, change the timings there. So right now I've, I've got this patched into the 
envelope minus. So you might say, well, we're looking at the inverse of the envelope that we're patching into that one. So then, instead of this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to patch that one into the the pulse there and make sure that we get the let's turn everything down then we won't see anything and then if we say well, well let's say we want to have the There you go. So now we've got something that is just the same uh, as the signal we're getting. But if we then add a bit of release to it, there you go. grab the other output from this it would make a bit more sense and this is something you can just play with as with any other ADSR that you might have. It's just beautiful, right? So let's uh, make sure that we can uh, listen to this. So the beautiful thing is, of course, that once you do get the, where are we? Oh, yeah, sorry. The minus or the negative envelope output that you got there, that's of course great if you want to do things like side chaining. So what you can do is you can actually use this minus envelope out and use that with the VCA to um, just say, well, if, if this one gets triggered, then I want to turn down the other signal that we're working with. So let me just uh, show how that works. So instead that we are using the, yeah, there we go. So we're gonna use the positive outputs and we're just gonna use that as CV in from there. And then we're gonna grab this one let me see if I've got a shorter cable here that's gonna make life that much easier. So we get grab the output from there and use that as a input for the VCA there. So now we have the regular output that we were expecting there. So again, the, um, the VCA here has a manual turn off. Well, there we go, let me just make sure that we have something that we can work with. There we go. So now we don't have anything. If we turn this on. Turn the gain up a bit. Like this right so we've got some something nice going on there but if we then grab another signal let's just say we grab just a drone from the owner and patch that in there 
I might want to change these around because this has a manual center. So I'm just going to patch this around. There you go. And then we've got this one and grab the negative from there. So let's disconnect this for now. Yep. So, very easy way to sidechain, and that's of course something that we all like, right? So let's uh, disconnect this, get this all disconnected, and then let's have a look at the next one that we've got here. Let me just make sure that we keep this connected. And that's the kick, which is probably one of my favorite uh, MRG modules that there is. So this is based on the 808 drums, um, and that's of course something, well, I, I've never touched an 808 in my life, but it's something I truly love. So another thing why I truly love this, it's got two trigger inputs. So if you want to get more into the well, more complex drum sequences, this is something you can then use. So let's uh, make sure we get something there. Oh, this is the wrong cable. I need to use this one if you want to listen to it. And then of course you've got your um, your accent setting for uh, number one and your accent setting for the number two trigger inputs. You've got your decay and you've got your, what's it called again? I, I do need to double check that. And that's of course the tone control that you've got. But you can turn this all the way down. And this is just something I, I truly love. It's it's just great, right? And then of course, last and certainly not least, then we're gonna look at the attenuator. So what I want to do is I'm, I'm just gonna grab the, so here we've got one, two, three attenuators. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, well, I'm just gonna connect this back into the sort output and I'm just gonna grab the, well, what, what, what shall we do? Let's grab the LFO from owner and this grab the sign output from that and use that to uh, do the actual CV so that's nice right so let's then instead of using that straight away let's just connect that to the first attenuator connect that to CV and right now we don't get any any sort of modulation so now we get a slight. All the way up to the level that we got right there. So. In all honesty, I, I do think that all of these modules deserve their own, um, let's say, 20, 30 minute uh, video. Uh, but I do want to make sure that we can showcase these as as a set because I, I duly think that they, they truly deserve that. 
So let me just quickly repatch this so we can make a nice um, a, a nice patch out of this. So I'm just going to use the LPF slash A and I'm then going to pass that into the, where is it? Uh, patch that into the VCA. Make sure we grab something from the ADSR. There you go. And grab the ADSR out and patch that into the, there you go. Grab the output from the VCA one, patch that into the mixer there. Make sure that we turn this all the way down. Make sure. Something like that, that sounds nice. just going to grab this saw output and then of course what I'm also going to grab is the kick output grab that one from there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that we get two different rhythms going in there So this is the first rhythm that we're going to get and then for the next one let me just find a cable here sorry for that let's grab this one or we might say we want to grab that one change the rhythm for that one give it a different accent but again this is just something that you can do with these great modules um, what you can then also do is say, well, I want to grab the the kick and use that as an input for the LPF and then grab the output from the LPF and patch that in so you can actually start to shape the actual sound of the drums. Oh, sorry. Just um, grab another melody there. And maybe just add some other sounds to this. Just while we're there, right? Maybe you just want to do some modulation here or there. While we're still there, 
let's just um, make sure that we've got something that we're really proud of. Let's add some wave folding to it. So again, I truly hope you like this um, this review, this quick review of eight modules from MRG. Um, as I said, if there's any of these modules where you say, okay, well, yes, but I truly want you to deep dive a bit further into uh, this one or that one, let me know. Um, as always, I, I do have to thank Gianluca over at MRG uh, Synthesizers uh, for making this set available to me. And um, for now, I would say, well, just have a listen and I'm just gonna go back to the studio. Cheers. So I truly hope you enjoyed this video on these MRG modules. I truly loved, um, well, I loved unpacking them. I loved installing them. I loved playing around with them. And I truly loved filming them as well. So I already mentioned during the, the video that I, I'm really impressed with the aesthetics of the overall set. And on the one hand, that is of course because they, they they just fit that same design language. It's all about that uh, white on black design and then get one of these modules in a in, a, in an acid yellow color. Um, I, I love that and I truly appreciate that as well. And with that being said, I do think that these modules play very well together, uh, but they can be great additions to any other well, rack as well, because if you're looking for a VCO in just 4HP, I will recommend the VCO. If you're looking for a folding uh, module, I can recommend that as well. If you're looking for an 808 kick, no worries there, just grab this one. And I do want to stress that these modules play very well together, but you can also just use them as you want and I've been playing around especially with the kick and the VCO in other patches as well and you might even have seen that in my previous videos uh, but I'm really impressed with the well overall build quality on the one hand but also the sound quality and the actual applicability and usability of these modules as well so that is of course a great compliment to uh, to Gianluca and MRG and even though I do have to thank them for sponsoring this video um, I would have given this compliment even if they didn't because um, it's a it's a one-man operation and these modules are absolutely perfect so I would recommend them to everyone whether you want to grab the whole set or just one or maybe uh, two or three of them you can't go wrong and they are of course very affordable so uh, make sure to uh, have a look at the MRG website I'm gonna link to that below as well uh, that being said um, I want to make sure that everyone knows that I I love making videos for this for this channel um, and I've been doing that for probably nine to ten months now and the the response has been overwhelming not just here on the YouTube channel but also now on Discord 
and I'd love to thank everyone who's been able to uh, provide feedback, give me some pointers, and I would love for everyone to keep continue doing that because based on your feedback and following your pointers, that's the only way how I can truly grow and improve uh, the videos that I'm working on and make sure that you get even better uh, Eurorack synthesizer or audio recording uh, or audio design videos going forward. So uh, please let me know if there's anything I can do to make things better. Uh, drop me a line at jesper at the modular clubhouse.nl. Uh, just leave a comment below, that's also fine. Again, make sure that you uh, join our Discord server. Uh, there are no costs involved. You don't need to be a patron. It's free for all. And um, the community there is just great. We've got these weekly meetings where we get people from within the, well, the Eurorack sphere, you might say. Um, whether it's a, um, a Eurorack maker, a Eurorack influencer, a, a YouTuber, you name it. Uh, we get people together and it's just great. I will be uh, recording these going forward and I will be putting these on my channel as well. Um, so if you've got any suggestions of people that I should interview, let me know there too. Uh, for now, I would say, please everyone, um, have a look at the links below. If you want to help, that's the way to do it. And um, for now, please everyone, uh, things are looking, well, a bit challenging currently. So please make sure that you stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you for my next video. Until then, cheers.